Hello again. Today's presentation will focus on summarizing Chapter 6, Telecommunications and Networking Security from page 695 to 739 from Shan Harris' All-in-One CSSP book. Today we will cover remote connectivity, dial-up, ISDN, DSL, cable modems, and VPN, uh, authentication protocol, and then wireless technologies such as wireless LAN, satellites, mobile technology. Remote connectivities. Dial-up internet is a service that allows connectivity to the internet through a standard telephone line by connecting the telephone line to the modem in your computer and inserting the other end into the phone jack and configuring the computer to dial a specific number provided by the ISP. <clears throat> the connection takes place over PPP protocol or authentication and it could use RADIUS, uh, TA, CAS um, as a second layer for authentication. With dial-up internet, you cannot use the phone and surf on the internet at the same time. Uh, we know also dial-up is less secure and security measures should be put in place for uh, this type of connection. Modems should answer after a number of rings to counter wire dialer. Uh, disable unused modems, use VPN, personal firewall. Integrated Services Digital Network ISDN, is a circuit switch digital service that offers all the capabilities of a voice phone line as well as data features. It can be used over public or private telecommunication networks. There are three different types of ISDN. The PRI based rates interface ISDN is a circuit switch digital service that can be carried over a single pair of copper wires. It consists of two B channels of 64 kilobit per second each plus one D channel of 16 kilobit per second. Combined total is 14.4 kilobit per second. The PRI or primary rates interface is the industrial strength version of ISDN often used as point-to-point -point connection between LANs, business, telephone systems or both. The uh, ISDN PRI consists of 23 B channels of 64 bit uh, 64 kilobit per second each but 1D channel of 64 kilobit per second and the last is the broadband ISDN or the hybrid ISDN mainly used within telecommunications carrier backbone mostly to encapsulate data at the data link layer into cells which travel over the sonnet network Digital Subscriber Line DSL is a modern technology for broadband data access over ordinary copper telephone lines from homes and businesses that can um, provide up to 52 megabit per second. We have symmetric DSL. This version receives and sends data at the, the, the same speed, 192 kilobit per second to 1.1 megabit per second. Asymmetric DSL or ADSL, it is called asymmetric because the, uh, the download speed is greater than the upload speed. Upstream is about 786 uh, kilobyte per second and 8 megabit per, uh, per second downstream. High bit rate DSL or HDSL providing transfer rates comparable to a T1 line about 1.5 uh, megabit per second. HDSL receives and sends data at the same speed. <clears throat> Very high bit rates DSL or VDSL an extremely fast connection um, and asymmetric but only works over short distance using standard copper phone uh, phone wiring rate adaptive dsl or ra dsl this is a popular variation of adsl that allows the modem to adjust the speed of the connection depending on the length and the quality of the line Cable modems provide high-speed access up to 50 megabit per second. Coaxial and fiber are used to deliver TV stations and one or more of the channels on these lines are dedicated to data transfer. Cable modem and DSL lines are considered hacker's heaven. Uh, systems that use this connection are always online and exposed to viruses and tro trojans. Maybe a good idea to turn off the computer or modem when not in use. Or enable firewall and add router that sits between the cable modem and uh, the internet connection. Trojans can be used to launch distributed DOS attacks from the victim PC. Virtual private network a VPN is a private connection over a public network. It allows connecting to corporate networks. 
When the VPN is established, a private virtual point-to-point -point connection called the tunnel is created over the internet between two routers. VPN can use different protocols. Point-to-point -point tunneling protocol or PPTP created primarily by Microsoft, it is an extension of PPP and encapsulates PPP packets to transfer them through a tunnel over a public IP network. It works at the data link layer. <clears throat> layer 2 tunneling protocol L2TP, it is the result of combining the technology of Microsoft PPTP with Cisco's layer 2 forwarding L2F tunneling protocol. The third is the Internet Protocol Security or IPsec. It is a popular and complete encryption framework for IP networks that provides end-to-end -end security at network layer by employing a variety of protocols and encryption techniques. The, the last but not least, Security Socket Layer Protocol provides a secure session between client and a server server to client authentication and optionally an SSL server can require the client to authenticate itself works at the transport layer and protect mainly web traffic next we're going to talk about authentication protocols there are three different authentication protocols the first password authentication protocol PAP is the least secure authentication protocol because it uses plain text password it authenticates over PPP connections the second is challenge handshake authentication protocol or CHAP is a widely accepted industry standard that uses a hashing scheme to encrypt in authentication CHAP doesn't send the actual password over the network instead it uses a challenge response mechanism with one-way hashing CHAP uses a three-way handshake to provide encrypted authentication the last one is extensible authentication protocol or EAP a protocol for variety of technologies and protocols which expands on uh, authentication methods used by P PPP protocol. Wireless LAN. Um, the wireless LAN components uh, consist of access points, which is considered as a wireless transceiver, channel, which is a certain frequency within a given frequency band, server set ID, which is the, uh, the SSID that is required when a wireless device wants to authenticate to an access point. The, the wireless device can connect to access point in two main ways open system authentication and shared key authentication unfortunately the wireless LAN standard uh, 802.11 had different security flaws such as poor authentication and the use of static uh, WEP encryption keys um, and then the, uh, the, the IP values um, are repetitive and do not provide the necessary degree of randomness then and then the the, the next flaw is the lack of in, in integrity data integrity <clears throat> TKIP temporal key integrity protocol uses the original WEP programming but wraps additional code at the beginning and end to encapsulate and modify it like WEP TKIP uses the RC stream encryption algorithm as its basis the new protocol however encrypts each data packet with a unique encryption key and the keys are much stronger than those of its predecessor now going to shifting to the wireless standards all the 802.11 standard specifications use the internet protocol and carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance um, for patch sharing the newer modulation methods provide higher data speed and reduced vulnerability interference Satellites. Satellites provide wireless connectivity between locations that are within the satellite's line of sight and footprint. There are two types of satellite connections. One-way systems or satellite broadband use a conventional internet link 
uh, usually telephone for upload and the satellite link for high speed download. Two way systems add a transmitter to the satellite modem and upload via the satellite. Mobile wireless communication. Mobile wireless technologies are the foundational constructs of the various cellular network generations, such as FDMA, frequency division multiple access, the TDMA, time division multiple access, CDMA, code division multiple access, and OFDMA, which is the orthogonal frequency division multiple access. Technology generations. We have four generations. The first generation, which is the analog one, and then the rest are digital generations. The second generation, third generation, and fourth generation, so-called uh, 4G. Some of the mobile phone security concerns the author listed false base stations, confidentiality, improper camera functionalities, malicious code, weak encryption, short message spamming, etc. Thank you all and I look forward to reading your feedback. Bye-bye.